is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this vintage style logo using Inkscape. And before you open up Inkscape, be sure to download and install this specific font that we'll be using. It's called Free Serif. I'll have a link to it in the description of the video. So go ahead and download that file and install it into, onto your operating system and then open up Inkscape. Otherwise, it won't, it won't show up in the font directory if you install it while Inkscape's open. So you'll have to refresh it if you do that. So once you've done that, we'll be good to get started here in Inkscape. By the way, if you'd like to know how you could in update Inkscape's appearance with this dark theme and these customized icons, I'll have a link to that information in the description of the video. The first thing we want to do is just set up our document. So I'll go to File, Document Properties, and I'll set the display units to pixels. I'm going to turn off the visibility of the page border and then we can close out of that. And then we'll open up the uh, Align and Distribute menu. We're going to want last selected chosen from that drop down. And then we'll open up the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients and Stroke menu with that button there. And then we're going to want to go to View. We want Custom Selected and then Zoom. Zoom in at one to one. And the first thing I'm going to do is create some text. So I'm going to grab the text tool over here and I'm going to be writing two lines of text. Um, the first line of text is going to be the text that wraps around the top half of the circle and the second line of text is going to be the text that wraps around the bottom half of the circle. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the canvas so we get a blinking cursor and in all caps I'm going to write, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to write Vintage Logo Design and then I'll click down here and write for the bottom half of the circle with Inkscape. And what I'll do now is I'll grab the Select tool. I'm going to click and drag over both of those text objects and grab the text editor up here. Let me grab that from my other monitor. There we go. Let me shrink that down a little bit. And I'm just going to look for that font that we installed called Free Serif. There it is. Go ahead and click Apply. Then we can close out of that. And then we now have our two text items. So what I want to do now is grab the circles and ellipses tool and I'm going to hold control and shift in the keyboard and click and drag to create a nice perfectly round circle like that. And this is going to be the circle that we wrap our text around. I'm going to want to bring the opacity of this down a lot, maybe about, actually, you know, bring it down in half and then just we'll make the color of this like a light shade of gray, something like that. And I'll grab the uh, select tool. I'm going to grab this text. And with it selected, hold shift and click on the circle and go to text, put on path. And it's going to wrap that text around the outside of the circle. So I'm going to go ahead and click off of everything to deselect everything and click on just the circle right here. And then I'll click on it again to get the rotation handles. And I'm just going to rotate it around to bring our text to the top. And the text itself isn't quite, I want it to be wrapping around almost the entire top half of the circle. So to do that, I'm going to do a couple of things. First, I'm going to click on the circle again to get back to the scaling handles and I'm going to hold control and just scale this circle down a little bit. And then I'm going to grab the text tool and click on the text to select it. And up here where this icon is, uh, spacing between letters, just go ahead and hold that arrow up to add some spacing between those letters like that. And I'll go back to the select tool. I'm going to click on the circle, click on it again to get the rotation handles and just rotate it around so you can straighten it out. And you want to make it so that the edge of each letter, the V and the N here are sitting on the same horizontal plane. So to do that, to make sure that we have that um, sitting equally like that, I'm going to come up here to where this ruler is, these little increments, and I'm just going to click and drag to pull down a horizontal guide, just like that. And I can use that guide as a reference point for where to, where to place the text. And right there you can see that looks pretty even right there. So I'll leave that as it is. And once we've done that, I'll click on that text and I'll finalize it by going to Path, Object to Path. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom half of the text. I'm going to click on this, I'm going to hold Shift, click on the circle and go to Text, Put on Path. And let me click off of it to deselect everything. I want to click on just the circle, click it again to get the rotation handles and just rotate it around down here. And if you notice, the text is going around the outside of the circle. We want the text going on the inside of the circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click on the um, flip horizontally, flip selected objects horizontally button. Go ahead and click that and it's going to put the text on the inside of the circle there. Now if you notice, the text is layered beneath the circle. So I'm just going to click and drag over that text object and raise it to the top with this button right here. Raise selection to the top. And I'll go back to the text tool. Uh, I'll click on this text item and I just want to add some spacing between the letters just like we did for the, uh, the previous text. And now I want to go back to the select tool and I want to click on the circle and scale up the circle. I'm going to hold control and shift and grab this arrow to scale the circle up 
so that it is overlapping the top row of the text here because we want this text to be running along the same line like that. So that's why we do that. And once we've done that, I can just rotate this around again. I'm going to take this horizontal guide and pull that down here to use that as a reference. As you can see, it's pretty close, but not quite. Right there it looks like to be the, uh, the good spot. So I'll click off of that to deselect everything. I'm going to hover my cursor over this horizontal guide until it turns red. And once it turns red, you can just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. And what I'll do now is I'll click on the text. I'll go to path, object to path to finalize that. And what I want to do now is create the ribbon down here that the text is going to be sitting on. So I'm going to take this with Inkscape text and I'm going to turn that white. And I'm going to take this circle right here and I'm going to give this a black outline. I'm going to hold shift and click on the color black to give that a black outline. I'm going to get rid of the fill color by clicking the X down here. And I'm going to make this outline thicker. I'm going to come over here to the stroke style tab. I'm going to set these increments to pixels and I'm going to try something like 50. See how that looks. Okay, maybe that's a little too thick. I'll try uh, 25. Not quite, maybe 35. Uh, I'm going to come up here to where it says when scaling objects, scale the stroke width by the same proportion. Make sure you have that unchecked for this tutorial. And I'm just going to hold Control and Shift and scale this circle down a little bit so that the text is sitting evenly in there like that. And maybe I'll make that a little thicker. Let's see what 40 looks like. Maybe scale that down or up a little more. Just adjust it as needed. Right there. What we're, what we're mainly paying attention to is this text in here. It doesn't, like this text up here doesn't really matter because we're going to delete the top half of this, uh, of this circle. So once that's done, uh, once you have it set evenly like that, maybe I could just increase that a little more. That's pretty good. Once that's done, we can finalize this by going to path, stroke to path. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the Bezier pen, which is over here. And I'm going to turn on snap to cusp nodes and snap to uh, quadrants. We want those two turned on. I'm going to snap to the left side of this circle over here. Or you know what? Let me see. Maybe the snapping won't work. I'll just bring the cursor to about the left side, just outside right here like that. Click, hold control, bring the line straight through like that. Click again, let go of control and just finish the shape going around the outside. It doesn't have to be exactly snapped to the left edge there. Just right there is a pretty good uh, estimate. Once we've done that, we'll grab the Select tool, hold Shift, click on the, uh, the black circle, and go to Path, Difference. And I can bring the opacity of that all the way up now. And what I want to do is go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, and I'm going to click and drag over these two nodes right here to select them both. And I want to put a new node between them. So I'll click on this button right here. Insert new nodes into selected segments. Go ahead and click that. So there's a new node in there. I'll do the same thing right here. Click and drag over those two. Insert a new node. Now let me zoom in on this so I can see it better. I'm going to hold control and roll up the mouse wheel a couple of times. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click and drag over this node, this new middle node right here. Then I'll hold shift and click and drag over this new node right here. And then I'll just hold control and just click and drag that down. Click and drag them down a little bit like that. So that the, uh, we have kind of like that ribbon with like a tail effect there. And now I'm going to grab the circles and ellipses tool. I'll hold control and shift and create a perfectly round circle like that. Let me uh, get rid of the outline. Let me make that like a light shade of gray and I'll hold shift and click on the X to get rid of the outline. I'll grab the select tool and put this over here. Let me hold control and shift to scale it down. Put this right about there like that. I'll make that white and then I'll duplicate that. Actually, I'm going to make that a little smaller. That looks pretty good. Move that over here. I'll duplicate that by hitting control D. Hold control, bring this straight across over here to put another one on this side. Hold shift, click on the other circle and go to path union so that they're both unified and then hold shift and click on the black ribbon and center it up on the vertical axis like that so that it's nice and evenly spaced in there. And now we can click off of that to deselect everything. And let me press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. The next step in here would be to put these little lines, these little uh, design accent pieces, the little lines in there. So to do that, I'm going to grab the Bezier pen and I'm gonna start this line, I'm gonna start this point inside of this circle right here and click, hold control, bring this straight up to about there, go ahead and click, and then press enter on the keyboard to finish that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the width of this maybe two pixels. I'll go with two. And for the cap, 
we want a round cap. And I'm going to go to the Select tool. Now I'm going to take this and bring this outside of the circle. To move the page around, I'm just pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. Uh, I'm going to make a duplicate of this. So I'm going to hit Control D on the keyboard to create a duplicate and then hold Control and just bring this over here. And I'm going to go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool and take this top node right here and just click and drag it down and just hold Control just to make it a little shorter like that. And I'll make the width of this three pixels. Now I'm going to grab this Squares and Rectangles tool. I'm going to create a square going over this shape right here. Let me just make that red so you can actually see it. Let me grab this Select tool so I can adjust the size of it a little bit. Put that right about there like that. Hit Control D to duplicate that and put this one down here like that. And then hold Shift and click on the other red shape so we have them both selected and go to Path, Union. And then hold Shift, click on the line, center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis like that. And then go to Path, Cut Path. Click off it to deselect everything and we can take this little segment right here and press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. Same thing with, oops, wrong one. Grab this little segment right here, press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And what we could do now is click and drag over this, all three of those little dashes right there and go to Path, uh, Combine. And I want to bring the opacity of that down in half. Same thing with this line. I want to click that line, bring the opacity down in half. Let me move this other segment out of the way. I'm going to take this line right here now and I'm going to click on it again to get the rotation handles. And I'm going to hold Control on the keyboard. And while holding Control on the keyboard, you could rotate it around like this. And I'm going to bring it back to the starting point. I'm going to press down the space bar to create a copy. And then I'm going to rotate it clockwise one step and press the space bar again to create more copies. And I'm just going to go around in a clockwise manner and just keep uh, stamping copies with the space bar while holding control the entire time until we get something like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and drag over all of that and go to Path, Combine. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to take this one click on it again to get the rotation handles, hold control and just press the space bar to create, to uh, stamp some copies like that. Going in a clockwise way or counterclockwise, it doesn't really matter. Just as long as you get those even, the even spacing between all of them. And then I'll click and drag over all of those and again, go to path, combine, and then I'll hold shift and click on this grouping of objects. So we have them both selected and I'm going to center them up on the vertical and horizontal axis and then click off it to deselect everything. So what I want to do now is grab this group right here, the outer, the, uh, the larger group, click on it again to get the rotation handles and just without holding control, just rotate it around a little bit like this until it's evenly spaced with the other objects. And now we can click and drag over both of those and group them together with this button that says Group Selected Objects and put this over up here towards the center. Let me turn off the snapping for now. Put that roughly in the center right there. I'm going to hold Shift and click on the ribbon and then center it up on the uh, vertical axis. Click off it to deselect everything. And now I can click on this and un I can ungroup them like that so they're back to being two separate objects. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create that little star for the center here. So I'm going to grab the Stars and Polygons tool. And up here from this toolbar, we want star instead of regular polygon selected, five corners, spoke ratio 0 0.375, and rounded and randomized both set to zero. And then we could hold control on the keyboard and click and drag straight up like that to create a nice star, just like that. Let me go to the Select tool. Let me convert this to a path by going to Path, Object to Path. Maybe I'll make this a little smaller. And what I want to do now is grab the Bezier pen. And I want to enable snapping again. I want to turn that back on. And I want to also enable right here where it says snap to an item's rotation center. So that'll make it so that we can snap to the center point of an object. And I'm going to start at this point right here. Click. Bring the line up into the center point of the star until it snaps. And then click. And then come to this corner down here. And then back to the starting point. And make that blue. Hold Shift, click the X to get rid of the outline so we end up with a shape like that. And I'm going to do the same thing to each of these other four legs. I'm going to start at this point, snap it to the center, down here, back to the starting point, make it blue, hold Shift, click the X to get rid of the uh, black outline, and we'll do the same thing for the rest of these sides.
And then finally this one over here. Make that blue. Hold Shift, click the X. And what we can do now is we can grab the Select tool. I'm going to grab this red star right here. And you'll know you have the red star selected when you see this red stripe in the bottom left corner of the screen. And I'm going to hold Control and Shift and scale this up about that big. And then I'm going to click and drag over just the blue objects right there. So we have them selected. And I'll go to Path, Union. And then I'll hold Shift, click on the red star, and go to Path, Difference. And now I'm going to hold Control and Shift and scale this down. Let me turn off the snapping again so it doesn't get in our way when we're doing what we're about to do next. And I'm going to put this towards the center right here. I'm going to hold Shift, click on the ribbon, and just center it up on the vertical axis. Click off it to deselect, and I'm just going to center it up like that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a duplicate of this. So I'm going to hit Control, Control D on the keyboard to create a duplicate. I'm going to make that green, and I'll go to Path, Break Apart, and then Path, Union. And then I'll hold Control and Shift and scale this one up and make it a lot bigger, maybe about that big. And now I'll duplicate that again by hitting Control D. And I'll hold Shift and I'll click on this larger grouping of lines right here and go to Path, Cut Path. And it may take a few seconds for your computer to process this depending on uh, how fast your processor is. But once it's done, you should end up with something like that. You can click off it to deselect everything. And I'm going to take this remaining green star. I'll hold Shift and now I'll click on this smaller grouping of lines. And I'll do the same thing. I'll go to Path, Cut Path. And we're going to end up with the same result. So let me click off of that to deselect everything. I'm going to zoom in on this area now. And I'm just going to go and take these lines that got cut off and just click and drag them and just delete them one by one. You can just click them and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of them. Just like that. You press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. I'm going to take this star and I'm going to make that black. And I'm just going to click and drag over everything and bring the opacity all the way up. Click off it to deselect everything. And as you can see, we've pretty much finished our design. We've created the star in the center with this makeshift, uh, I guess you can call it like a light burst or a star burst coming out of it. One last thing you might want to do is if you want to have some negative space here within this ribbon is you can click and drag. You can actually you can click on the text, then hold shift and click on the uh, circles right there and ungroup them. And then go to Path, Union, then hold Shift and click on the black ribbon and go to Path, Difference. And then you can click off and deselect everything. And as you can see, we are finished. We have created our vintage style circular ribbon logo using Inkscape. So uh, if you haven't done so already, consider joining the Logos by Nick mailing list to receive email alerts when new tutorials are posted. Your information won't be sold to or shared with anyone else, and you will never receive any kind of spam or promotional offers from me. In fact, the only time you will ever hear from me is when new tutorials are posted, and you'll get to watch them on the Logos by Nick website without ads. So. Check the link in the description for that information if you're interested in that. And as always, thanks for watching.